Today, we are going to work on solving linear equations with distributive property. This is Teeks from Algebra 1, 5a. So first, we're going to start with these two example questions. So right off the bat, what I see is parentheses. And so whenever I see parentheses, the first thing we're going to think about is distributive property. What does it mean to distribute? It means we're going to take this number that's in front of the parentheses and we are going to distribute it into everything inside the parentheses. So I typically draw arrows and these arrows are going to remind me that I need to multiply 3 times 4x and 3 times negative 3. So when I multiply 3 times 4x, I get 12x. And then when I multiply 3 times negative 3, I get negative 9. Don't forget that you distribute to everything. That's one of the biggest mistakes that students make. Okay? Now, going back to solving, what we talked about previously is that we're going to go ahead and start by moving the variables, which is anything with the letter. We're going to move this to the other side. Now, when I was looking at the work that you guys were doing yesterday, some of you guys would just put minus 4 and you would put minus 4. Well, now you have unlike terms. I can't combine numbers and, and constants like this. Make sure that you move the 4x. So when you add or subtract, you want to take that x with you. Okay? I now have 8x minus 9 equals negative 5. Okay? So now I'm going to move my constants, which is my number that doesn't have a variable attached. I'll move it to the other side. Remember, I'm trying to balance out this equation, basically. So whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Make sure you change the signs because negative 9 plus 9 is 0. You have 8x equals negative 4. Now, please don't look at this and say the answer is 2 or negative 2. I can't, I'm not dividing by negative 4. I need to move this 8 to the other side. I need this 8 to become a 1x. So the inverse operation of multiplying by 8 is to divide by 8. So now when I divide by 8, 8 divided by 8 is a 1x. Now I have negative 4 over 8, which becomes, when I reduce it, it becomes negative 1 half. Sometimes we get so excited when we see 8 and 4 and we start processing that it's some kind of 2, but because it's negative 4 over 8, it was negative 1 half. Okay? Let's try example number 2. First, we're going to, we see these parentheses. Whenever we see parentheses, we look in front of the parentheses. If there's a plus sign, we get to drop the parentheses. But if there's anything else besides a plus sign, we're going to have to distribute. So we're going to start off by drawing to remind ourselves that we need to multiply to everything inside the parentheses. So negative 2 times x, negative 2 times positive 1. Now on the other side, 3 times x and 3 times negative 9. We're going to move this 3x. Remember, this equation is balanced. And so if I, want to, if I want this to disappear, I have to subtract it from that side. But if I subtract it from one side of the equation, I must also subtract it from that other side. Okay? Negative 2 minus 3 was that negative 5x, and I brought everything else down. Now we're going to move our constants, which is a number without the variable, just a number. We want to move that to the other side. Opposite of subtracting 2, the inverse of subtracting 2 is to add 2. And again, we have to add it to both sides. Bring down that negative 5x. Negative 27 plus 2 is negative 25. Now, right now, these are being multiplied because they're next to each other. So the opposite of multiplying by this negative 5 is to go ahead and divide by negative 5. Because negative 5 divided by negative 5 becomes 1x. And then your final answer is 5. Okay? A couple more questions. Let's see how these go. So every time you see parentheses, you've got to be aware if there's something in front of the parentheses. 
if there's something in front of the parentheses, I want to see your arrows. I want you to remind yourself that you're distributing to everything inside the parentheses. Okay, so I'm multiplying on this side by a 4. Now we're going to move your variables to the left. We're going to eliminate it from this side. Right now it is a positive 4x because it doesn't have a sign. And if it doesn't have a sign, that means it's a positive number. So then in order to become 0, I must subtract it. I now have negative 1x plus 6 equals negative 12. We're going to go ahead and move that positive 6. We want to eliminate it by subtracting it, and we have to do it to both sides. So I have negative 1x equals negative 18. And I can't just stop there. I don't want a negative 1x. I'm going to go ahead and divide by that negative 1. So remember the rules that we've been discussing. We are going to first get rid of parentheses, then look if we have like terms. Then we're going to move the variables to the left, constants to the right, and then we divide by the coefficient of the variable. So we divide by this number, okay? Now, example number four is actually our last question. So again, we look in front of these parentheses. And I'm going to distribute the 2 here and here. Not, don't touch the 5. We're going to just bring that 5 down. It doesn't do anything. And then 2 times x, 2 times negative 3. 3 times x, 3 times 4. And bring down a minus 3. Now, I have more than just a variable and a constant on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and circle some things here. On my left side... I have a 5 and a negative 6. Don't change the signs. They are on the same side. So 5 minus 6 is a, neg ooh, is a negative 1. Bring down the plus 2x. On the right-hand side, again, I look. Look at this. I have a positive 12 minus 3. I don't change the signs because they're on the same side. So when I circle, I'm letting you know that I'm not going to change any signs because they're on the same side. I keep the signs exactly the way they are, okay? So now I'm going to move the 3x to this side by subtracting 3x. And I do it to both sides. See, this is when I do it to both sides because I'm moving it to that other side of the equation. Negative 1 minus 1x equals 9. Okay. I'm going to move the constant to the right if, if I need to. Again, I have this coefficient in front of my x. I don't want a coefficient there except for 1. So how do I get rid of the negative 1? I divide by negative 1. Okay. So x equals negative 10. And actually, this is our last question, okay? So we have a triangle here. It says the perimeter of this triangle equals 59 inches. What is the value of this x in this triangle? Well, perimeter means we are going to add all the sides together. So if I add all the sides together, 5x plus 2 plus 3x plus 3, plus 3x minus 1, I'm going to set it equal to the total perimeter. So I have a lot of like terms here, okay? So I'll go ahead and start by circling my x's. I'm not moving them to the other side. I am just adding them together. So 5x plus 3x plus 3x is 11x. Then I'm going to go ahead and circle my constants with the sign in front of them. 2 plus 3 minus 1. That's 5 minus 1. It's going to become a plus 4 equals 59. Now a couple of different colors going on there. Okay. So now guess what? Okay, so all the variables are already to my left. Oh, I, get to, I don't have to move those. 
Now I'm going to move the, the 4 to the other side by subtracting it. I end up with 11x equals 55. So right now these are next to each other. That means they're multiplying. Opposite of multiplying. Dividing. And I have solved for my x. It did not ask for the length of the sides, but if I needed to, I could take that 5 and I could plug it back in to figure out what the lengths were. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you practice distributing and solving equations with variables on both sides, and I hope you have a great day.